morning, everybody. How you doing today? My name's Andrew. I'm Megan. I'm Lauren. I'm Grandpa. I'm okay. I'm Petey. I'm Tracy. I'm Aunt Becky. And we're some of the Veggie Boys. I guess. And we'd like to thank you for stopping by. If you're new here, please consider subscribing because we can grow a lot of stuff on the farm, but one thing we can't grow is this channel without your help. Welcome back, everyone. It's so nice to see you. Last night on the farm, we got a little over an inch of rain. And with yesterday's rain total and adding this from last night, we are now at two inches of rain for the week, which is a lot more rain than we were expecting to have. It's funny how that happened. But anyway, that just helps us to understand that it is gonna be a sloppy day. And to get this sloppy day started off right, we gotta get the farm market all set up and get our chores taken care of. So I'm gonna finish getting this floor all vacuumed and then pull everything out of the cooler. Farm market is now all finished being set up. Yesterday, we did get a lot of picking done. We were able to get some extra peppers harvested. We we're also able to get some extra beans. Now it was hot peppers and sweet peppers mostly. We got Italian L, Cuban L, and sweet banana picked on the sweet pepper side, along with bell peppers. And then we got some hot Hungarian wax, jalapeno, hot cherry and the long hots now we have a few more varieties out there that we can pick but it is still early on for those varieties but for now it's nice to see a little more color being added to the farm market especially when it comes to peppers now grandpa just got back to the farm he was out running around early this morning well grandpa wasn't by himself who was with you Mimi so my mom and dad were out picking this morning dad had to grab a few baskets of pickling cucumbers for an order and my mom was grabbing a few bunches of dill for an order and there was one more thing that my mom was grabbing and that that was zucchini blossoms. They've been very popular this year. And uh, yeah, she had to pick those along with the dill. We just wanted to quickly get those pickling cucumbers washed. That way we can get the order all put together. But now we're down around back because we need to get the animals taken care of this morning. And to get started off, we're gonna grab silage for the cattle. Oh, it's so sloppy out. So sloppy. This is how we've been feeding silage more recently. We've been chopping all the sweet corn stalks onto the wagon, and then we unload right into the bucket of the skid steer loader. And then we just take the fresh chop with the bucket and dump it into the feeders, and the cattle have really been loving it. We'll do this until we really can't do it anymore when all the sweet corn stalks are gone. And by that time, we'll have our silage bag filled and we'll start feeding that for the cattle. Daniel just got the last scoop of silage dumped in for the cattle. All they need now is their grain. Good morning. I hear you, I hear you. All the grain has now been dumped in, so that means all of the cattle are taken care of, and there's a chicken in the skid steer loader. But I'm not too concerned about that. I was just concerned about my cattle and they're looking pretty good munching down this morning. <laughs> How are we doing? Oh yeah, looking very good. Alrighty, so the animals are now all taken care of. You saw Daniel and I getting the cattle all finished. We then moved on to chickens. Daniel collected eggs while I fed. And in the meantime, dad was taking care of all the calves. So now we're all finished with animals. When we work as a team, it goes relatively quickly. And uh, yeah, we're ready to move out to the fields and start picking. So we had a small change of plans before we could head out and start picking. One, we had a large order just get taken away. Uh, the pickle lady showed up she took all the pickles that we had which we're very thankful for and then we also had some mums and asters that needed to be moved out of the lower greenhouses and brought up in front of the farm market because you can't sell them when they're down over the hill so all these tables that we have up here will be getting filled with mums 
and asters and they should be moving out of here pretty quick it is still a little bit early for mums where we live but we got this table over here getting started and then we have two small tables over here so now that we got a few of the flowers moved up we got that order all taken care of we can head out to the fields We are now out in the cornfield and this is gonna be the first thing we're harvesting today. To our knowledge, we don't have any sweet corn orders that we need to pick for this morning. So we'll see what happens. Wow. Matt, taste test. Taste test to make sure that it's okay. Yeah, it's delicious. We just got our bin all picked and we've bent over all the stalks. That way we'll be able to remember where we harvested last time. Now, if you could not tell, we are in a new variety of sweet corn. Uh, the next variety starts right there and it's a lot taller than what we're picking right now. Now, I'm not sure if it's because of the size of the corn or what it is, but this variety is putting on fat very fat ears of sweet corn. The other variety that we were picking has longer, thinner ears. I mean, it doesn't really matter. Uh, they both taste really, really good. The only difference with the fat ears is you get less in a bin, but you fill the bin faster. Matthew had to leave in the middle of harvesting the sweet corn, so he took the side-by-side -side and left, which means Dad and I don't really have a way back. So until he gets here, we're gonna be doing some crop scouting. And this is a good place to start. I've been updating you on our latest planting of cucumbers, pickling cucumbers and zucchini. These bare rows of mulch, we went through and direct seeded the crops into the soil and they've been doing really, really well. We had a great germination on everything that was seeded here. You can see these entire rows just have strips of green that are running down them. And something we're very impressed with is the zucchini that was direct seeded. Everything that was direct seeded looks great, but the zucchini, that's impressive. And with the way that we've been selling zucchini this year, uh, it's gonna be important that we have a nice crop. What are you finding, Dad? Ooh, tomatoes! I was just walking through our second planting of tomatoes, but right in front of me is our first planting. And let me just say that we are very pleased with what we are finding. And today is gonna be even more exciting because we plan on picking some tomatoes. I know right here, get my hand in there we got plum tomatoes that are ready to harvest now the entire plant is not ready there is select spots all throughout the field where we are finding red so it's not going to be easy pickings by any means but it is exciting to be finding tomatoes out in your field especially when they look like this wow I need to settle down. I'm getting all excited. I'm starting to grab tomatoes and I don't even have baskets. So dad, what are we gonna try and get picked today? We have to pick over the zucchini. We need yellow squash for an order and we're gonna pick tomatoes. Who's excited? Raise your hand. I'm excited. <laughs> we'll be back to the tomatoes shortly. Matthew brought baskets with him. So we're gonna run and grab that yellow squash that we need for an order. So we thankfully got enough yellow squash to fill the order. So we're gonna be heading back to the farm, getting that really big order put together. And then Matthew's gonna take that and deliver it. And once we have the order all together, we're gonna get the side-by-side -side hooked up to the wagon. We're gonna come out here, get our green zucchini picked, and then we're gonna pick tomatoes as long as we can. When we got back to the farm, we were able to get Matthew all loaded up with that produce and he is on his delivery run. And we got the side-by-side -side hooked up to the wagon. We got plenty of baskets and now we're out here to grab the green zucchini. No, oh, that one's a little small. We'll just cut the large one right behind it there. It was trying to hide behind the small zucchini. Oh, there's a lot of zucchini right here.
The zucchini we are harvesting today is a variety called Spineless Beauty. And what makes it spineless is that there's no thorns on the plant. The older varieties of zucchini were very difficult to pick into because they were very sharp and spiny and they would cut your arms up. But these newer varieties don't have the spines all over them and it makes it a lot easier to pick. For example, the yellow squash is not a spineless variety and uh, it really eats your arms up when you pick it. It's one of the reasons why I don't enjoy picking yellow squash. The zucchini, not near as bad. So we really like spineless beauty because of that reason. We're not getting our arms all cut up and the squash that we harvest from it always looks really beautiful. Look at this thing. Look at this next to Petey. That's literally like the size of Petey. I was just out of Penn State for a meeting uh, class on corn. Uh, a couple Penn State instructors, uh, professors were teaching us on uh, nutrition for corn, fertilization, weed control, and uh, some newer varieties. Can you believe that? How old are you, 58? And he's still in school. Farmer's never out of school. We've now moved the side-by-side -side over to where the tomatoes are. Now the cool thing is these tomato rows go out through the entirety of the field. So these are some long rows. Dad said we can pick whatever we want, so I'm gonna be harvesting plum tomatoes. So I'm probably gonna just pick a row and just go straight out through it and see what I can find. Since it's early, I'm really just looking for anything that has color because once the tomatoes are pulled off the plant, they will continue to ripen. And the tomatoes let off a gas that is called ethylene and that ethylene gas helps to ripen other tomatoes. So as long as we have tomatoes that are ripening together, it will encourage the other tomatoes to keep ripening. Well, everyone, it's really exciting to say that was our first basket of plum tomatoes harvested for the year. The round tomatoes look like they're a little further along than the plum, so it's a little harder to find the plum, but everything that's been picked so far looks great. can't tell you how excited I am right now to be picking tomatoes. Tomatoes becomes one of those jobs that we end up doing every single day and we do for a bulk of the day. So it's a lot of work. But I just think back to all that time that we spent in the greenhouse seeding these tomatoes and then transplanting if we needed to, planting out into the field and now harvesting. With crops like tomatoes and peppers, you worry so much about the crop, just hoping you're gonna be able to harvest because as farmers, we realize all this is really out of our control. Uh, we can't control the weather, but we can do our best to grow a really nice crop, which is what we've done this year. So now that we're at the point in the year where we're starting to harvest tomatoes, well, just makes all of us very happy. All the hard work is paying off and it's easy to see with each handful. We just got wrapped up with harvesting tomatoes this morning. We are going to come back after lunch. That's the only thing that's stopping us right now. It's just about lunchtime, so we're gonna get all this stuff taken back to the farm, get something to eat, and then we'll be back out here. We have all of the produce brought down around back. We do need to wash some of it. However, it is lunchtime. We do not want to be late. So we're going to get to washing the produce after lunch. For the morning, we got nine baskets of tomatoes, which for our first time harvesting, not so bad. And I mean, it was easy to see that there's mostly green ones there. We had to do very selective picking, but uh, yeah, nine baskets is nice. What are we having for lunch today? 
Ooh, it looks like we're having taco salads and jello. We are now down around back again and we're gonna be washing those tomatoes that we harvested. We're gonna be loading them into the washer very carefully. And we wanna make sure that everything is washed evenly. A few of the tomatoes just have dirt on them, the way this one does. So we just wanna polish them up, get them looking really nice. All the tomatoes have been moved into the farm market. We have a few baskets here in the back room. That will give the tomatoes that have not completely ripened up yet the time to ripen up. But now that we're all finished with lunch and we've got the tomatoes all washed up, we're gonna be heading back out to the fields. And to start that off, we're gonna get two pallets put onto the wagon so that we have them. We need uh, 27 large heads in one bin. And then we also need a bin for us here at the farm market. So a little bit of picking tomatoes and then a little bit of order picking and then some stuff for the farm market. We're gonna have a busy afternoon. Right there's good? Oh yeah, that's perfect. We're just dropping off the bins. There's no reason for us to haul them around. Some of you may notice that this field has been mowed off. This is where our two early varieties of cabbage were and the broccoli and cauliflower. The only thing that's left to harvest is our longer season varieties of cabbage and that's what's over there. And that's also what we're gonna be picking today. Now that we're back out here, we're gonna get started with picking tomatoes again. Before we do that though, there are a few things I wanna talk about. This row of tomatoes right in front of me, there is a lot of cherry tomatoes here. We have a grape tomato, cherry tomato, and then an orange cherry. So I guess there's not a lot, there's only two varieties of cherry tomatoes, but I should have said smaller tomatoes. I believe once we get up further, there's also a Juliet tomato that we have planted, a smaller cherry. We also have a few varieties of heirloom planted right along this road. We have Cherokee purple, brandy wine, we have a pineapple tomato, and I believe there's one more, Mr. Stripey. Mr. Stripey. We have to be very careful with the heirloom tomatoes and right when they're starting to change color is when we want to pick them. But after doing a quick walkthrough, I'm not seeing too many that are changing color. Just some beautiful tomatoes that are gonna taste great. I'm gonna hop right back into picking plum tomatoes. The boys are gonna finish off the cherry tomatoes and then they'll be moving on to round tomatoes. There's just a lot of tomato talk today. what's going on with this weather today but it's feeling a little on the chilly side the wind is really coming across the valley today and we've had cooler than normal temperatures so those two things added together are just making it feel colder however the feelings of harvesting tomatoes is warming me right back up it's just a feeling you can't replicate what are you picking over here orange cherry tomatoes Ooh, wow they look good the thing that's nice about these orange cherry tomatoes you just brush them off a little bit oh yeah mmm that's good. And something that's easy to see is that there is going to be a lot more here very shortly. Look at all the green tomatoes. We just got our last basket of plum tomatoes harvested for the day. That brings us to a grand total of six. Now those are by no means crazy numbers for us, but being this early in the year, we're happy with what we're getting. And not only have we been able to find good plum tomatoes, we've been able to find great round tomatoes. We have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight baskets of round tomatoes. So our grand total for the day is 24 baskets of tomatoes. Then we also got a few heirloom and some cherry tomatoes. And everything looks good, but let me just tell you, oh, it is gonna get better. Look at some of these tomatoes we have coming. Look at this, gorgeous. Now that we're all finished with harvesting tomatoes though, we're gonna be moving on to peppers. Woohoo! just getting there. That smells good. So good. <laughs> We've had some really strong winds coming across the valley and you can see it in the pepper plants. 
It's actually pushed a few over and they all look windblown. Thankfully, they're not too, too tall to the point where they got snapped off, but these peppers look like they've been beaten up by the wind. Dad right now is grabbing some Cubanel peppers. Matthew is getting long hots, and then Petey and Daniel are gonna be grabbing hot wax. And I'm gonna be right here grabbing some beautiful sweet banana peppers. And this is why vegetable farming can be dangerous. Daniel, what kind of peppers was I just picking? You were picking hot wax, not sweet banana. I got confused. I saw peppers and got excited. So I'm picking the hot wax. Daniel is picking the sweet banana now. Plants are loaded. It's a good thing I'm coming through and picking because if it got any windier, these would snap off. Now with the hot wax, because they look so similar to the sweet banana, we always grab a few hot peppers and add it to the top of the basket. That way, if we're moving anything around in the cooler or we just forget where we put them, uh, we can know which ones are the hot ones. Oh, wow. <laughs> look at that. Yeah, that's nice. I mean, it looks nice, but I would taste them. This is what vegetable farming is all about. If you were curious, Dad, your peppers taste great. How come you eat all the profit? What are you talking about? That was the only pepper that was gonna make me any money this year. I was saving it for the fair. You were saving this one for the fair? Yeah. It wouldn't have made it to the fair. Never mind, Andrew. I found bigger ones. Wow. Gorgeous. We got finished with harvesting peppers and we were about to head over to the cabbage, but we looked in the field and we saw some really nice red habaneros, so we wanted to pick them. Now these are red habaneros, but they still have not fully matured. So they're on the younger side and a lot of them are still green, but it's still plenty of spice and that's what some of the customers are looking for. Maybe. Look at the size of some of these. Aren't they huge, Matt? Maybe. They're gigantic, yeah. Let's make like a tree and leave. <laughs> Just so you know, if you struggle with weeds in your garden, we do too. We weren't able to get in and cultivate this late because the stuff got really big and now it's been taken over by ragweed. But you look good, Matt. Yep. That's my gut. There's a lot of nice cabbage in here. We just had to get through that weedy section. This is a lot easier to pick and see in. But what we wanted to do was move over to a different section of field and pick some smaller stuff for the farm market. We love harvesting those huge heads of cabbage, but not everyone wants them, sadly. So we need to get some small ones. You know how much 15 pounds of coleslaw is, Andy? That's a lot of coleslaw. Look at me, Matt. Do I look like I know how much 15 pounds of coleslaw is? You look like you know what 20 is. Settle down, boys. We got the 27 heads of really large cabbage already cut, and now we've got a full bin for the farm market. Now you would think that's enough cabbage for the day, but it is not. We need 60 pounds of red cabbage for an order, but that's not gonna be a big deal. This is what the red cabbage looks like. The heads are pretty uniform in size. They're all about the same, and they are pretty dense. So whatever they're using it for, this red cabbage should be perfect. Wagon is all filled up. It's time to take it all back to the farm market. We got all the peppers and cabbage moved into the cooler, and now we're taking all the tomatoes that we had harvested and running them through the washer. That way they're all cleaned up, and I think we're gonna be leaving them down here to ripen a little bit more. We did take some up so that we had fresh tomatoes up there, but whatever we do have left will stay down here. We just got all the tomatoes washed and cleaned up, and they look absolutely 
gorgeous. Since we just got finished washing tomatoes and we're already down around back, we decided to get the animals taken care of for the night. Matthew just got finished dumping grain into all the cattle and dad's taking care of the calves. So that should about end our day and it's in perfect timing because we gotta head up and get the farm market all closed up. We just got the farm market all closed up and now we're heading up to the house. It has been a beautiful day. It was pretty chilly this afternoon. I'm not gonna lie with that wind whipping through. But now we're all done and we're heading up for dinner. Hey y'all. I can't find my pants! Oh, brother, he can't find his pants. But anyway, he'll eventually find his pants. Grammy, what are we having for dinner tonight? We're having ham, sweet potatoes, Brian's sweet. fabulous sweet corn, sweet corn, fresh red beets, red beets, and spinach. Woo! Callie, what do you want for dinner? Cut up. You want to cut up sweet corn? Cut up. You like sweet corn? Do yeah. Okay. <laughs> we are now all up at the house and we're all sitting down at the dinner table, so you know what that means. This is where we're going to end the video today. I'd like to thank everyone for watching and I hope to see you next time. Bye bye. Bye bye. bye, -bye.